Best known for 2002's A Thousand Miles, Vanessa Carlton seems to have disappeared from the spotlight. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're looking at whatever happened to Vanessa Carlton. Make them away downtown, walking fast, faces pass and I'm homebound. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this video, we're following the career of singer-songwriter Vanessa Carlton and events in her life that took place after her big hit. Born in 1980, Vanessa Carlton grew up in Milford, Pennsylvania as the oldest of three. Did you think it would be this easy? <laughs> it's never easy. Her mother was a school teacher and a pianist, and that's where Carlton originally took interest in playing the piano. When she was a teenager, she attended the School of American Ballet in New York City, where she felt isolated until she found a piano there. She attended Columbia University, studying music and dance before ultimately dropping out. Not music and writing those songs, it just saved me. And then I got to the point where I was like, you know, screw ballet class, I'm not going to, I'm not going to dance. During this time, she waited tables and played open mic nights, until she signed with A&M Records in 2001. If you know any song from Vanessa Carlton, it's A Thousand Miles. There's always times like these when I think of you and I wonder if you ever think of me. The music video memorably shows Carlton sitting on a moving piano, traveling some distance while the singer laments about being separated from the one she loves. Carlton originally wanted to call the track Interlude, but producers balked at the idea, thinking the title wasn't commercial and, more importantly, that it had nothing to do with the tune's content. Cause I need you. And I miss you and now I wonder. Released in 2002, A Thousand Miles peaked at number 5 on the US Billboard charts. It also received three nominations at the 45th Grammy Awards, including Song of the Year and Record of the Year. And who can forget that scene in the 2004 movie White Chicks, when Terry Crews' character enthusiastically sings along to it as it plays in the car. Making my way downtown, walking fast, faces past and I'm homebound. Though Carlton had a specific guy in mind when she wrote A Thousand Miles, she never disclosed who the subject was. Carlton's first album, Be Not Nobody, which contained A Thousand Miles, came out in April 2002 and is her most successful album to date, peaking at number 5 in the US. Another track from the album, Ordinary Day, reached number 30 on the US Hot 100. Then there's the music video for the album's third single, Pretty Baby, which has a dark ending where the boy who's the subject of Carlton's affection is revealed to be tied up in her house, bound with duct tape. Be a paradise, put up a fucking line. Following the success of Be Not Nobody, things looked promising for Carlton. She collaborated with Counting Crows for their cover of the Joni Mitchell classic Big Yellow Taxi. She also made a guest appearance on the short-lived TV show American Dreams. However, Carlton's 2004 sophomore album Harmonium wasn't able to capture the success of her first album. She's so pretty and she's so short. Maybe I'm more clever than a girl like her. With White House's the record's only single, Carlton tried something different from the pop-friendly tunes she'd done before. The song is about the period in people's lives where they're experiencing milestones. Because a part of the song describes a woman losing her virginity in a sexually explicit way, White Houses was censored by MTV and radio stations, and the song only made it to 86 on the US charts. The 2000s was a difficult time for Carlton, as she was trying to figure out what kind of artist she wanted to be. She has admitted to quote, smoking a lot of pot and giving shitty interviews, where she phoned it in. There were a couple of years where she wasn't on speaking terms with her mother. She also admitted to abusing alcohol, cocaine, and pills. Carlton has said in interviews that, in retrospect, she wished she could have started her music career when she was a little bit older and wiser. After Carlton's split from AM Records in 2005, she has focused on taking more creative control in her work. With subsequent albums, Carlton has continued to tackle more ambitious themes and grow as an artist. At the beginning of the music video for Nolita Fairy Tale, the moving piano from A Thousand Miles is smashed to pieces after it's hit by a taxi cab, symbolizing how Carlton wants to move on from her biggest song. I know, you know. With later
later albums, Carlton took inspiration from interesting places. Rabbits on the run, it's hard to know what's good for you. For 2011's Rabbits on the Run, it was Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time and the novel Watership Down. Honestly, I think over time, I finally felt like I was ready locally to release a live record. My voice has changed so much over time and I worked so hard on it. Mm -hmm so I don't sound like Minnie Mouse. For 2015's Liberman, a source of inspiration was an oil painting created by her Jewish grandfather, for whom the album is named. I wanted to bring to light my family's real name as well. You know, we're, we're proud Jews from Queens via Eastern <laughs> Russia, you know, so like let's, you know, be honest about our, our name and heritage. In May 2019, Carlton announced that she is going to be in the Broadway show Beautiful, a musical about the life of Carole King that won two Tonys in 2014 including Best Leading Actress in a Musical. And it's too late, baby, now it's too late But we really did try to make it Her 10-week run, which started in June 2019, will be Carlton's first time performing on Broadway. Carlton considers it an honor to take on the role of an artist she has idolized. If I'm going to create another thing, I want it to be a contribution. It's not some vanity project. I just don't want to add to the muck, you know, I just want to try and do something wonderful. Meanwhile, in 2010, Carlton came out as a quote, proud bisexual woman at Nashville Pride, a pro-LGBT event she was headlining that year. Carlton hadn't planned on coming out during Pride Parade, but was encouraged to do so after the look of pain in some fans in the crowd resonated with her. Coming out, she felt, gave her a special connection with her audience, particularly those struggling with their own identities. In 2013, she married John McCauley, singer-songwriter of the indie rock band Deer Tick. Officiating the ceremony was Stevie Nicks, who is a close friend of Carlton's. Carlton lives with her husband and a daughter in Nashville. Alongside her family life, Carlton is still writing songs. Her sixth album is expected to come out in 2019. She's made peace with her past and is now more sure about where she is. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.